YouTube, this is Justin, aka Demonic Sweaters, your guide in DIY multimedia production, and I'm here today with a vintage tech review and tutorial of a Tascam Porta 02 MK2 multi-track cassette recorder. Now these things are very cool, uh, they were made, well the history of the 4-track, which is what this is called also, um, dates way back to the 19, early 1980s or late 70s. And basically before we had computers, we used to record uh, multi-track audio on these. Like this was your home DAW back in the day. And uh, the way this works, um, some of you might not know, I'm sure a lot of you do, but it just uses a regular cassette tape, which you can still buy. One thing you might want to uh, remember or to consider, the best sounding cassettes you can get for these are these high bias tapes, either the Type 2 Chrome are usually going to be the best sounding tapes and sometimes the Type 3 metal tapes can sound good as well. Um, or you could just use a regular normal bias tape which I have right here. For this test I'm going to use this Chrome bias tape. What this thing does is it basically is a tape recorder that has four separate channels on it that you can record and overdub and then you can basically add different instrumentation on it. This one is a very basic one. Um, they had much more complicated ones but this is also, it not only is a basic one, it's one of the later ones that Tascam made. Uh, so basically what I mean is it basically has four tracks and that's all you're gonna get. Some of them had bouncing features where what that meant is you could record on three tracks and then bounce those tracks down to one track and then you'd have three more tracks to work with but every time you did that you'd lose some quality or gain some character depending on how you wanted to look at it but you can do that with this one but it's much more complicated to do so because you have to use a second cassette deck to bounce um, so I'm not going to be doing that in this test I'm just going to be recording on the basic four tracks that are available as far as other inputs and outputs, it has a uh, phone, headphone output, as well as just some standard RCA outputs uh, for sending the sound out for when you're ready to mix down or just monitoring. And then on the front panel, we have, uh, it's really basic, we have trim knobs. And this is for when you're recording, these are where you get your recording levels. And the faders, or wait, no, I'm sorry, it's the faders, I believe, Actually, I have to, it's both. <laughs> That's what it is. I haven't used it in a little while, but it's actually both. You have your trim and the faders. But when you're mixing back or playing back audio, the faders and the trim basically do nothing on this model. Uh, what you're going to use at that point is the level uh, section over here, uh, which is these knobs. So that's track one, two, three, four. And those are your levels. And then you have pans. It has no EQ whatsoever and then it has a switch to change the headphones to mono uh, for recording and the headphones level, which is right here. And this one only has two faders, but it does have two inputs. Uh, some of the cheaper four tracks only had one microphone input and some of the better ones had all four. Uh, back when I was younger, I used to have one that was a Fostex that had four XLR inputs and then uh, an additional four quarter inch inputs with a total of eight inputs. It was still just a four track, but it had an eight channel mixer on it. And that one was pretty badass. But this one just has two inputs, but that's fine for home recording. Um, so what I'm gonna do today, I think is just record. I'm gonna use a keyboard drum sound to get like a drum track on here. And then I'm gonna overdub some parts and we'll just make up a song as we go and uh, we'll see how it sounds on this thing. So I'm pretty excited and uh, yeah, stick around and check it out. Okay, well, I think what I'm going to do, instead of recording the keyboard drums, I'm actually gonna record some djembe drum and use that as percussion track. And I'm gonna record that using this insanely cheap Pile Pro microphone, the PDMIK1. Uh, these things are like $5, so. I haven't really used it much and right now is a good a time as any to really use it so you know these mics they suck <laughs> um, you know there's a lot of cheap mics out there um, and from what I learned you know five dollars is just too cheap um, but it's for this uh, purpose you know back in the days of like recording on a four track 
microphones and recording equipment in general was like far more expensive than it is right now. So a lot of times what I would be doing on what, when I had an old four track was recording with mics of this quality because I'd have to buy them at like Kmart and stuff like that. And a lot of times they were the mics that had the cable permanently attached to the, the input uh, on the mic. So for authenticity, uh, authentic, what is that word? Accuracy's sake, <laughs> I'm going to use this crappy ass pile PDM IK1, which I guess means pile something with a D mic one. Uh, and it, they come with a cable. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in here. So the mic input, and let's see if we can get a level. Ugh. Angle this down a little bit. sure all of my other knobs are down one thing you record when you're recording you have to make sure that you give it enough time for the leader of the tape to uh, go through tapes always had like a little bit of space on them before they could record which now we've gone plenty far enough so I'm gonna go ahead and start playing So now it's time to do my bass track. And what I'm gonna do for the bass is I'm gonna use the G1 on uh, zoom pedal, amp modeling and effects pedal as the bass amp. I'm gonna use it for the guitar amp too when I get into the guitar. But right now I'm just gonna record some bass on track two. So to do that, what I do is I make sure I plug into input two on the four track and then switch this switch on the second fader to in, to two and put number one on safe. Make sure I get a good level. And you're not really gonna hear too much on your end yet. You're just gonna hear like me playing the bass in the room. But after I get it all recorded, I'll play you back the whole thing. One thing I wanna mention too is the headphone uh, jack on these four tracks is insanely noisy. So when you play it back in the headphones, it always sounds way noisier than it actually sounds. I mean, it's gonna be pretty noisy regardless, but through the headphone jack, it's just like awful. Um, and very unbalanced too, be, between the left and right side. But, uh, and I have some crazy effects on this pedal, but you'll hear all that when I, when I go back and play it all back at the end. But here I go, I'm gonna go ahead and record it. Just to make sure I rewound. Do that again and yeah there's no punching in on this four track if you mess up you just do it again all right that's all for the bass now let's do some guitar okay now for some guitar There's the guitar. Now let's do something else. Maybe a second guitar? All right, let's try a second guitar. So let's plug into input two, put that on safe, and now let's put that one on four. 
do a practice run real quick. Maybe I'll get a different guitar sound here. All right, we're done. Let's listen to it back. So that concludes my demonstration of the Tascam Porta 02 MK2 cassette four track recorder. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, uh, you know, and you like these types of videos, let me know in the comments. Uh, subscribe, click like, all that good stuff. And uh, if you're interested in this exact four track, I'm actually going to be selling this one on my website. So if you want it, uh, go ahead and just click the link down below and you can pick it up for yourself. Uh, if it's not there anymore, then that means somebody already bought it already. But you can find these on eBay. Uh, the key is to make sure <clears throat> that when you're looking for it, to make sure to ask questions and make sure that the unit works because there are a lot of 4-tracks out there that have broken belts or stretched out belts inside that no longer function correctly. And uh, that will make it pretty much useless. Um, you can replace the belts, but they're really hard to find. The correct kind and it's not so easy to replace the belts inside of them this one has good belts and it works just fine as you heard so uh yeah if you want to get this one you can click the link but really that's not why i made the video really i just wanted to you know have this out there for the people looking at these and don't really know much about four tracks uh you know the newer generation that wants to use them i grew up using these things so this was kind of what i cut my teeth on for recording uh, but yeah, they're really cool. They're a lot of fun. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.